guys feel like you can get away with calling yourselves novices? I mean, <laughs> that's probably I, know, not. Real, I feel like we might have some friends. Yeah, I yeah, feel I like we might be at least sophomore now, right? I mean, like, I'll how many sophomore. other people have done like 1,200 miles off road? <laughs> Greetings and explorations, everybody. Time once again for another exciting, if not whimsical, Talking About Cars podcast with you know who and me. You know mm -hmm. who, of course, being Hot Rod Bob Beck. And I'm there. the always Randy Crudeau. That's, That's it. Good. That's good. It's got, I got to be me because I ain't anybody else. And I can't so, be you. I'm not tall enough. Uh-uh. Yeah. And you know something? <laughs> what? So, well, I'll tell you about this in a second. So, so today... We're kind of taking a look back. Mm -hmm. We had uh, Jovina Young and uh, Erica Martin from Ford in as part of the Rebel Rally. Right. What was the one thing we said when they come in that we'll know whether or not they're still friends? Oh, yeah. That, it depends on where they ended up and such. And, uh, boy, it was going to be tight because they were going to be stuck together for, what, right. a week? But yeah. what was the key thing that we were going to know whether or not they were going to be friends? I don't remember. Remember, it was, remember when they were with us, they were on the same Zoom feed. Oh, that's right. Oh, separate feed. Yeah. Yes, mm. who's on separate, separate feeds? feeds. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. I just looked. They're on separate feeds, ready to go. So, okay. We're doing the Revelt Rally in review, of course. If yes. you're just joining us, which you have to, because this is the start of the show. The right. Revelt Rally is an all women rally across the backwards areas of, uh, oh, it's, of an our state. Area. it's an off-road yeah, area it's an off-road it's not a, a time to distance on the street right. to make the stoplight this is really hard charging driving with four-wheel drive vehicles made specifically to race or compete off-road and of course they had plenty of adventures in this and we're going to find mm -hmm. out some really good ones and i've actually god forbid done research no Yes. Oh, well, actually, which one of us has? This should be fun. This should be fun because there were some things we discovered. So, okay. without further ado, Bob, do you want to yes. do All do right. The introduction. I can do the introduction. Coming to you live and direct from places far and far away, it is Talking About Cars with Randy Gardoon, Hot Rod Bob, and the Ford team from Ford that drove the brand new Bronco in the Rebel Rally. Voila! And there they are, ladies wow. and gentlemen. Amazing that they've made their appearance they made it. as they are. Look at that. There she is, and there and she her, is, too. and there and, she is. Oh. It's uh, Jovina Young, along with Erica Martin, and our old friend, Elena, Alana, our old friend, Alana. Old friend that you forgot her name already. Yes, I already yeah. forgot her name. I, you know, I always do that. Our, every time I say old friend, my brain connects and I mysteriously mess up your names. I don't know why. Just I'm, I'm those... not even that old. Exactly. No, but <laughs> exactly. But you are uh, certainly getting close to getting the talking about cars jacket that oh, yeah. you get for being on the show five or six times. I mean, twice on talking about cars and once on the other one. And, it's, yeah. you, know, you know, that's a three peat almost. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of share joining us right here on the Talking About Cars podcast as well. The subject, of course, as we mentioned moments ago, the Rebel Rally. The Rebel Rally. And uh, let's talk a little yeah. bit. <laughs> or a fix. Yeah, yeah a fix. Okay. Yeah, just brush, brush his teeth. Just brush his teeth and get to a thing with him. Oh, mm. thank you. Thank you for no, making the mistake. Mm -hmm. You feel better. All right. I yeah. Let's get back to the show, shall okay. we? With our sure. own foibles. Uh, again, you guys are back and joining us, uh, talking a little bit about the Rebel Rally. And I've actually done research, but before we get into research, the most telling tale of the Rebel Rally. Remember when we talked to you guys and we said it'll depend how well you guys are friends still, depends on whether or not you join us on the same Zoom feed? Yeah. And look at this. Uh -oh. Is there something you guys want to tell us? <laughs> We're definitely still talking. I, I definitely say that you know, the rebel definitely tests your highs and and your lows all within an hour of your emotions and tensions can go up and down. But um, I think we really learned 
Erica and I, at least, really learned well, learned how to work well together and how to communicate. And we kind of understood when each other were feeling down or when each other were feeling stressed out and kind of figured out how to manage through it. So um, I think we kind of came out of it even closer than ever. Oh, that's good. So the bruises have all healed and um, <laughs> the, the emotional fine. bruises have all healed. The emotional, yes, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> what, was, what was the biggest lesson you guys learned? going through this i mean in the i mean in general i think from the beginning emily told us um she's the she's the woman who, who created the rebel rally she told us um they have this thing that is, that is ride the middle you know the highs are so high and the lows are so low and i felt like every time we got a little too confident or felt like we really had it in the bag and we are you know we've got this um we were quickly humbled by the, by just, you know, the crazy events that could happen. Um, and just like, you know, I, I guess I just learned um, to kind of, yeah, ride the middle and, you know, not get, not get too comfortable, if that makes sense. Um, because you never know, <laughs> you never know what's going to happen next. Hmm. That makes me wonder what happened next. <laughs> Well, Javina? Well, we, I mean, we would just be having this, like, amazing, perfect day where we, you know, got checkpoints we didn't think we would get, or we were totally on time, and we would think that we were, you know, finally going to have a clean scorecard and make it to back to base camp on time, and then we would make a silly mistake and get lost, or get stuck in a dune, or, you know, we, we would always have these days where we would think, like, man, we, we've got this, like, we are getting this down um, and then, yeah, something would happen. So I, I think we just learned that, like, you have to enjoy the, the, the good moments, but, like, don't get too comfortable. Alana Cher here is with us as well. And, of course, you remember Alana. She's been on the show several times. Uh, good to see you on video. Thanks for joining us in our actual video show for those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, but, of course, for the rest of you watching on uh, radio or listening on radio.com. Uh, Alana, I'm, I'm interested from the standpoint of this was your first time to do this as well. Now, you, you're a thrill seeker anyway. We know that from your roadkill stuff and all the other things. How did you get involved in this? And really, what was your experience like? Well, you know, it's funny because um, so many people were like, oh, you know how to, like, you've done all this stuff, you know how to do this, like, you're going to be ready to do this. And I was like, I'm a journalist, like, I professionally watch other people do things, <laughs> and then I ask them about it, like, I don't do anything, you know? And, um, and so it was a very different experience to be behind the wheel, to be making decisions, uh, to have to, like, pay attention to competition rules. Like I learned the rules afterwards because I don't need to know them during the thing. I do all the research afterwards. I come back, I have Google, I sit and I drink coffee and I'm like, oh, that's what was happening there. Yeah, I see that, you know? And um, that actually doesn't work very well when you're in the middle of participating. I probably should have read the rules beforehand. I learned a, I learned a lot afterwards. Um, I'm ready for next year. <laughs> but it was great. It was actually really, really good to get to to get to be a part of something and to to be in competition and, and to be going through it with everyone else because like I said, normally I'm just I'm watching everyone else do it and even if I'm a part of the drama, it's it's separated. And this time it was not separated. You know, I really felt all of the highs and lows that everybody else was feeling. And um, when we did all three teams make it at the end, is that a spoiler? Um, <laughs> it was just, it was a really great feeling and it was, it was a different feeling from just telling a story about a team. Racing that, I that question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> never mind. Goes, yeah. yeah. No, okay. It was, it was different from just watching a team succeed. I felt like I was really a part of it and I was like genuinely very, very thrilled to, to be a part of it. Jovina, you went through a lot of this too, and obviously uh, you had your ups and downs, I'd imagine, on that uh, course. How'd it go for you? For me, I think one of the key things I learned and took away from this is just how much I can really do. I mean, I think going into this, there's so much of this that both Eric and I had never experienced before. I think when we were last on the show, we were telling you that we were very novice to this whole thing and kind of, I think, a little scared going into it, into it. Honestly, we did a lot of the um, training and everything, but there's only, we did it very quickly. So um, 
I'm really proud of what we accomplished and how much we learned and the fact that we were able to take these checkpoints and plot them on a map and then look at a map and determine like how we were going to get there. And then as we were getting there, make a decision on the fly and say, oh, that terrain works really well. We're going to make it up that or, or you know what, that might not be the best choice that we wrote on. It looks different on the map than we see in real life. Let's, let's do this detour and go around and try to make it there. And I, I can't believe that we did all of that, let alone camp outside for the every single night. Um, I had never really been camping like that before. So, you know, straight up tent, beds, you know, no beds, you're just straight up on the ground. And um, it, it just some, and some temperatures that were really cold. And then it stemmed it all the way to the end that we got to about 106 degrees. So we were just in everything. And I can't believe we were able to, you know, finish every stage of the game. And as we went along and learned so many things along the way. How much of the preparation that you did prior to leaving actually came out the way you expected it to when you got on the real course? You know, I, I, think, I, mean, I think, oh, go ahead, Erica. No, I was just going to say, I think the preparation was invaluable. Like maybe not in direct application of, you know, exact notes, but even just in confidence building in kind of like, you know, if you, if you reach a, a steep incline and you know you've been up something like that before, it just gives you that little bit of extra confidence to just kind of go for it. Um, I will say, you know, once we were there, there were many elements of the, the game that we kind of learned as we were going through it. So there are things you can practice, like the driving and the navigating mm -hmm. to an extent, but we did learn so much, you know, on, on the course, which is why I think there are a lot of repeat repeat um, c competitors at the Rebel because it's like once you have that secret sauce of the strategy and you can apply that to the driving and the navigation, I think that's what kind of starts to give you a competitive edge and make you, um, make you a real competitor. I have to ask Erica, is that something about clouds or counting sheep behind you? <laughs> um, it's, cl it's clouds. Clouds. Oh. This is um, a, a, prince, a princess from a certain m movie. Um, frozen, mm -hmm. uh, rainbow, clouds. Yeah, I mean, don't, you don't see it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, sure. No, I, oh, yeah. 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 Frozen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I see frozen mm -hmm. every time I open up the freeze. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad you squared that away. I was just curious. I saw that and I thought, huh, I was going for sheep myself and maybe yeah. that's my own sleep issues. But anyway. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things you guys got to do, and I think you just mentioned it a little bit ago about sleeping in these tents, and I guess sometimes you didn't get to sleep in the same, um, I guess you got large tents or where you have individual tents. I mean, I've seen pictures of some of the tents you've had, uh, and then you got this really nice food. I mean, what was the best meal you had out there? Alana. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'll just throw I, it out know, there. I mean, honestly, probably like one of the best meals was just like some, like a tangerine and some chocolate I ate on like in the middle of the day, like out in the desert. Um, the, the food was very good, but, uh, you know, we were so tired and so hungry by dinner time. I, I don't remember any of it. Um, but I do remember snacks. Like I remember snacks very well because they would be like out, you know, like you've been driving for four hours, you know, there's nobody around and, um, and you're like, oh, why is everything suddenly so hard? Oh God, I, 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 what's happening? And then your partner would be like, do you want some almonds? And all of a sudden you'd be like, oh, everything's fine again. I'm totally, it was great. You know? so, all right, we know what the ladies from Ford did for preparation. Alana, what were you able to do to get yourself ready for this? <laughs> well, um, I, we, the three of us were a little bonded on the, the tight turnaround of our training. Um, sadly, I wasn't able to join them for training, so uh, I ended up going out to Utah for one day. Um, there is a, um, like a master, um, uh, what's it called, like, like trail boss um, out there named John Marshall who works with Nina Barlow, who's um, a part of the rally. And he, he was able to find a day to, to give me at least some dune time because I hadn't 
ever been in the sand dunes and they're not only are they intimidating they actually are quite dangerous and it's not something that you should do without at least a little bit of idea of it so um so i was able to do that and it was actually a really fun day um and and then i took an rei compass class on a saturday morning down in san diego and that was it <laughs> that was it <laughs> training <laughs> hmm well, at least you had a compass class. Although, what what mm. exactly? You just hold it out and try and figure out where you are based on looking at the north or well, something actually, like that. Well, actually, it was super fun, and um, I really recommend the REI classes. It, they're not very expensive. I think it was like a hundred bucks. It's like a half day. Um, we met in like this beautiful park, and we went over maps and like map terrain and how you like reading maps, which it, was actually very useful when we actually got out there because. You know, reading a map, especially a map that's off-road, is not just like, where are the roads and where do they intersect? It's like, okay, I'm looking at these squiggly lines that tell me how tall this is. And they don't just tell you how tall it is. They also tell you how steep it is. So if you see a whole bunch of them right next to each other, probably don't go that way. That's, that's really probably not going to work for you. And so that was something that I didn't know. I mean, I, I've never read a topographical map. You know, why would I? And uh, so we went over that. And then you go on like a basically like a little navigation hike with your compass and a map and then like have to like triangulate points and stuff. I mean, I could have used about, I don't know, four months more practice of it, but <laughs> just being able to do it at all at least gave me the vocabulary that I needed once I was at the Rebel to start picking it up. Because um, if you've never done that kind of work at all, you like, like reading a compass is not straightforward. You, you know, like it's not just like you pick it up and you're like, oh, there's North and now I know what to do. Like you, you need to know what to do with that information. Um, and, you know, you need to know like, okay, I want to like reverse this heading. Like I know where North is and I know where I'm going and I want to go back to where I was. And, you know, you need all of that. That stuff is not something that you can just wing. Okay, so entertain us with, um, basically entertain us with some lingo. You know some of the some of the compass lingo that you've learned, Jovino. What's a good compass li some compass lingo? Well, like one morning as we're looking at our checkpoints, um, there could one one could say instead of giving us GPS coordinates, it could simply just say this checkpoint is uh, 170 degrees from checkpoint four, at and 170 degrees and it's 5.5 kilometers. And so what you'd have to do is take a look at the map where you had plotted checkpoint four, or hoping that you plotted checkpoint four correctly. And then we use a map plotter to figure out 170 degrees and draw that angle on there, figure out where that is, and then the 5.5 kilometers. And then when you're out in the field with your vehicle, you literally are from that checkpoint four, taking your compass out, putting it at 170 degrees and literally putting it around and trying to figure out where they call it red in the shed is where the red arrow kind of goes into this little open arrow. And when, right, when it's right in there, that means you've, you've hit 170 degrees. So that tells you, okay, I need to go that direction. And now I'm going to set my odometer for 5.5 kilometers or whatever I, we said it was. And then we're going to go that direction for 5.5 kilometers, hoping that you, you get to go like the crows fly, but most likely you don't. Um, to get to that checkpoint. I think that's very good, Bob, yeah. don't you think? I thought it was a good lingo. You know, I, you're you're going to work out great driving here in Los Angeles when you get out here. I was going to say, <laughs> come on out here. You can do, use yeah. that. Uh, Erica, can you use that information just to be able to, like, get a parking place at the at work when you go in? No? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm going to give it a try. Okay. <laughs> that works. That works. All right. What was the best lingo you had there, Alana? Um, well, I mean, I did start to feel pretty cool when instead of saying latitude and longitude, we just started being like, yeah, what's the lat long on that? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to know, to, to know how to get right to it, the shortcuts, yeah. yeah, the slang. I think that was very impressive. Yeah. That was very impressive. All right, you guys, we're all in them. We have to ask the magic question, since this is one of the reasons you guys are with us, was the vehicle you were driving or basically trying to figure out which way to go was the new Ford Bronco. Although one of them, according to what I saw, was a 2020 and the rest of them were 2021s. Does that make any sense? No, we all three of us, all three. 
teams were in 2021 Bronco Sports. Oh, okay. Because one of them on the uh, the rally website said 2020. 2020. Yeah. But whatever. It's the same car. So how did the cars act and how long did it take you guys to get used to driving in them? I don't think I'm allowed to talk about it until January <laughs> or December. Yeah, we, um, you know, I think what we could say is just from a uh, intuitiveness, um, it's definitely intuitive, which is great. And, um, and the other thing about the Bronco Sport is it, it was just really easy to learn very quickly. Um, I don't think it took any of us any time at all really to learn it when we got out there. Um, I think no, that I, I could probably, right away. I think I could probably say, you know, so this was the Bronco Sport. Um, some, some people call it the baby Bronco. So, um, you know, it's not, it's not the big Bronco, but people were very excited to see them on the road when we were driving to the rally and they were very excited to see them when we were in the rally. Like, um, right. people are obviously pretty stoked about the Bronco coming back. They liked the looks of this one and it got a lot of attention. And I don't think it was just because it was like wrapped and looked all race car -y. I mean, they, they're, they're very charming looking vehicles and people were paying a lot of attention to them. Okay, so yeah, go ahead, Bob. I, I think people are excited about Ford getting back into an off-road vehicle. That's really an off-road vehicle with a heck of a history, even back to the days of, of uh, the Baja runs wow. where uh, the, car, the, the Broncos were out there really competitive then. And now they even, at least resemble the original Broncos, which other companies can't really say, can they? I am. I'm doing an article for Car and Driver, which thankfully comes out like four days after the embargo does. So um, ah. look, for that, look for that December issue of Car and Driver. And what December? 2020. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't have a date? The, 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 it's a bag, it's monthly oh. bag, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> the data of the magazine. Okay, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. You know, just... she's got a lead time she has to follow. Uh, right, yeah, exactly. I'll write it, and you guys can buy it in December, or yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get it right. right in the mail. We'll do that. You'll get it in the mail. I'll buy it or whatever, and then we'll yeah, sit there and read it. You're missing my column every month. I mean, no, I am. I am reading it, and I really enjoyed your first one. Oh, thanks. Got to be good, especially when you put the naysayers in their place. <laughs> Okay, I'm always a step behind here. Go <laughs> check out Alana's column. Okay, it's on my list of things to do. Thank you, Randy. Certainly, I my Please humble apologies for somehow not being involved in the memo. It's okay. So, Bye. I want to go back to the food. So, you guys <laughs> were well. The reason I bring this up, and 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 it's funny that Alana said what she said because I was reading somewhere where you guys had like a like a chef some fancy dancy michelin chef guy that made your food and the one meal that alana remembers is some chocolate and cracker thing that was served like in the car halfway through meanwhile if the if the michelin chef is listening watching this going or listening to this going what you know that guy will never cook for her again yeah, yeah. Say, he was a very <laughs> And he always winked at me when he would give me uh, give me my breakfast in the morning at the food truck. Um, it was not, I'm sure it was good. Like I just don't remember. It was really good. It was really good. Yeah, good cover, girls. All right. So, yeah. what was your favorite? What was your favorite meal, Jovina? I think um, it was probably second to last day. Uh, we'd been, you know, hard at it for almost a whole, you know, a little bit more than a week at it now, and um, he made New York strips. Mm. that were cooked perfectly seasoned really well um i think there was a side of veg and um just i think there, we had these huge baked potatoes and dessert so it was just awesome i mean it was the night it was that night right after we finished we all finished so i think it also came with a little side of relief yeah <laughs> made it more delicious. big bowl of relief yeah, yeah. I, I got a question, and maybe you don't want to get into this, but all right, you're on the road, you're off road. There's no gas stations. There's no place to have a potty stop. What do you guys do? There's yes, plenty of places to have a potty stop. <laughs> <laughs> so where Erica goes, nothing grows, is what yeah, you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, he asked the question of every race car driver that comes into the show. So yeah, absolutely. I guess yeah. it's 
it's a so fruitful I would season. Say that, the, uh, that the Nevada and California desert is probably blooming better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mean, you. That's, I mean, that's one thing about this experience is you throw, you know, modesty and you know, out the window. I mean, within the first, I think, few hours, just because it's like it's not really an option. You're in very close quarters for very long periods of time. Hmm. Modesty is not an option. Okay, good. That'll be our slug line on this show. That's, that's, right. That'll be great. Right here. I'm Randy Cardoon. That's Hot Rod Bob Beck. And of course, if you've been listening, you know we've been talking about the Rebel Rally with uh, automotive journalist extraordinaire, Alana Scher, also from Ford Motor Company, our good friends, because we've talked about things with them that they probably haven't talked to their significant others about anytime soon. Yes, yeah. it is uh, Erica Martin and Jovina Young. Thanks for joining us again, you guys. I was going through some of the day-by-day -day adventures, or at least some of the news updates that they had. Uh, first off, Alana, if you could talk about it, there is, uh, I want to say it was day four. Something happened where mm -hmm. you guys, according to the, the, the charts and graphs and all this, didn't do much. <laughs> what, what happened that you can talk about? Um, well, we had a, an issue in the morning that threw the timing off. And remember, I was saying that learning the rules is something that's very useful if you're in competition. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges of the rally is not just to get your checkpoints, but to get them by a certain time. So your time management is very important because you've got to cover a lot of distance. If you spend a lot of time doing something in one area in the morning, it's going to really throw off everything that happens after that. So yeah, we didn't do that. So that, that's what happened on day four is that, um, you know, we got behind and didn't realize it. And so basically everything that we did was past the point at which we were allowed to do it and have it count. So, um, so that was unfortunate. Uh, it would have been something that, you know, yeah, I should have known. Um, had I been a person who reads the rules. But, uh, <laughs> you know now. Uh, it wasn't an all bad day though, because at one point we, um, we met a wild donkey in the, just like out in the middle of nowhere. And we like fed him a bunch of apples and like, like hung out with a wild donkey who was like totally into just like being our buddy. And I mean, maybe that wasn't the best use of our competitive time, but uh, <laughs> I think it was worth it. <laughs> But, but you're an animal person too. I mean, so you 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 love animals. You've got a, a multitude of dogs and so forth. So this was that was a, a good uh, psychological break for you. It was. It was actually um, one of the highlights for me. Did you sneak the donkey in the back of the Ford Bronco and then you had a chance to bring it home or something or what? No, but I do have a photo of the donkey in the Ford Bronco. So. Okay. The girls have seen it. They know it's true. <laughs> in the Ford Bronco. Okay. Well. I can't yeah. wait till the folks at Ford see that. That'll be a commercial yeah. onto itself. Uh, so Jovina and Erica, uh, you guys, let's see, you finished third. You actually didn't do too bad. You finished uh, third on day five. That was like your best day as I saw it. Am I correct? And what went right? I like the sound of it. I mean, yeah. we, were, we were really good about not checking our our daily standings just because it kind of can fluctuate so much. Um, but it's nice to know that at one point we were in third. I look. I have to say, looking back, I'm very impressed with us, Jovina. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think what day five was. Um, it might was that our Johnson Valley day. Uh, I know we did really well Same. there. It might have been the Trona Pinnacles. We did really well in the Toronto Pinnacles. Toronto, I know there was, it was day four. Day four, okay. So then it was Johnson Valley. What All was right. it like? So your, so your bad day contributed to our good day. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> hey, that's <laughs> racing. That, that's competition. Now, you at this point, explain to some of the people, I mean, thinking rally, you're just following a map, but you've got certain times to meet. So that means at some point, you're running fast, or faster than you may be comfortable. What was that like? Uh, because you're not competition drivers. No, I mean, I, think I mean, we're like always the, within the legal legal speed limit because you can get a penalty if you're not. So, I mean, but there were definitely times when I was pushing it. Like if I knew we were going to be late for a checkpoint mm -hmm. or during those um, enduro challenges, which is where you need to keep on time and on route. Um, if you 
lose time somewhere else. You're trying to make it up throughout the course. Um, so those were definitely times when I was going fast. Um, and, you know, I think it's probably scarier for Jovina as a passenger. <laughs> I mean, I like driving fast, so I, I didn't mind it at all. I liked it. All right, when you say driving fast, you said there's speed limits. What is driving fast? And you're off-road. You're not on paved highway. So what is fast off-road? I think in most areas off-road, with the exception of when we went through, you know, um, like protected areas like National Park and Joshua Tree, those were much slower. Or, I mean, Death Valley and Joshua Tree, those were much slower. But I think in general on um, dirt roads, the speed limit that the rally gave us was 50 miles per hour. Um, okay. But I mean, okay. most of the roads we were on, you couldn't, you couldn't go 50 in a, in a right, 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 right. You know, I would say average, maybe 35, probably. Um, just mm -hmm. because it was actually pretty difficult terrain in a lot of, in a lot of areas. Um, and certainly 50 on dirt feels, you know, like 150 on pavement when you're trying to watch out for things coming up and and remember how tall your vehicle is and what you can get all over and what you can get around and keep your tires in one piece. Yeah, so that's it. You don't want to cause a failure. You don't want to be, do a DNF because you've, you've broken the vehicle. Well, and, and this isn't like that as far as, you know, if you've ever seen, let's say, the Qatar rally or something like that, where these cars are just zooming over uh, other places and, and where there are no roads and just going really fast, you guys are a little are a lot, a lot more deliberate, I would imagine, correct? Oh, yeah. I mean, it actually was really important for multiple reasons. I mean, one, for the rally itself, because um, like Erica said, we're, or Jovina said, we're going through um, public lands and protected areas. So this was not a closed course. It, there could, we saw all kinds, you know, you could be other off-roaders out there, there are donkeys in the road. And also, um, our vehicles are stock, like bone stock, like no roll cages, nothing. I mean, we, we had helmets, but there's no fire protection. There's no, you know, like, it's not the kind of thing where you want to end up having a high speed wreck because we specifically are not in vehicles that are built for that, you know, like, mm -hmm. they're stock. Was there a vehicle also in your group, I think, uh, that actually was an all electric vehicle? Did I read that right? An EV? Yep. Yeah. How did that work out as far as being able to hold a charge the entire day? Um, well, they had charging stations along the route, just like we had on certain days fueling stations along the route. And they were very careful to make it fair um, so that when they were, had to, you know, pull over and charge, you know, they had to abide by certain rules. They couldn't use that time to their advantage. They had to be separated. Um, they were, they were very, they went out of their way to make it fair so that the EV um, portion of the race or the class can, can be something that they can continue and that, um, you know, this was the first year they'd established it. So I think they really wanted to make sure that it, that it wasn't an advantage over anyone else in the competition. And I would think that to charge the vehicle, it would have to be a super EV charging station because you're going to have to turn it around a lot quicker than you normally would. Yeah, it was, they had this, it was a whole semi truck. Um, it was actually a very interesting company that that's working on mobile EV solutions. Um, Emmy Hall was the, was the driver of the uh, electric truck, the Rivian truck. And I would recommend you guys talk to her. She's great. Sometime we will, we'll have to do that. So now that you've done this, you guys want to come back and do it again. Well, Jovina's still smiling. <laughs> Jovina's smiling. We'll start with her. Yeah, you know, I think it was one of those things, Erica, I'll always say this, but it's one of those things where at the end of the day, we would look at each other and just be exasperated and say, God, that was one of the hardest days of my life. It was so hard. Let's do this again tomorrow. Like, we just, we just wanted to get better at it. You know, okay. we wanted to fix the mistakes. The problem is, you'd fix the mistakes that you made from that day, and then you'd make brand new ones. <laughs> the day before the next day. Yeah. Well, you never move forward unless you move backwards a little bit. Right. So, Erica, uh, Erica, you seem a little cool to the idea. I don't know. Maybe it's me. Uh, uh, no, I would, uh, I would, I would love to do it again. You know, it's funny, like before I did this, um, you know, I would say I'm not the kind of person who does these types of things, but now that I've done it, I'd say, well, maybe I am. <laughs> 
maybe I am a bit cool. I don't know. I I loved it, and I I just I feel like it's the kind of thing that no matter how many times you do it, you could take something different away from it every time. So there's going to be a Bronco in your driveway when they come out. Yep. I think she knows people. She could probably get a good yeah. deal. Yeah. I'm and just the, saying. And the burns in the snow when they plow the streets will just be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, if they had, and I know you had said Ford is kind of aiming toward eventually doing more and more electric vehicles, correct? Uh, as a, uh, Ford, as as a, a company. Ford, right? a company. As a company has stated that, yes, like we are looking to do more and more of that in the future. Would it be interesting to for you to let's say do it if they had you do it again or asked you to do it again, take an electric, maybe they have an electric truck somewhere down the line. Would that be something that you think or an electric Bronco? Would that be something uh, feasible that you might consider? You know, so we can't really speak to future product, but like, so being in an electric vehicle would definitely be another added challenge for us to learn if we were to do it. It'd be like another angle of like these novice. These novice off-roaders decided to take on the challenge in a, an electric vehicle. So, um, you know, there's something to it. That'd be something kind of fun. Um, definitely would consider. But, you know, I think there's enough challenge for me and Erica to doing it in your traditional combustion engine as well. You guys can ask. Go ahead, Bob. Jovina, Jovina and Erica, I, how long do you guys feel like you can get away with calling yourselves novices? I mean, <laughs> that's probably I, know, not. Have real, I feel like we might have some cred. Yeah, I yeah, feel I like it might be at least sophomore now, right? I mean, like, I'll how many sophomore. other people have done, like, 1,200 miles off-road? Are you petitioning Ford to go back again next year, or would you go back on your own? Me? Any of you. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, I will have to see if Ford likes my story. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and meanwhile, they're watching yeah, this going, oh, let's see, what does Jovina and Erica say about this? Maybe yeah. we will, maybe we won't. What do you think? I think for us, we just- There really are jokes it. flying around that they're looking for a win from us for next year, but <laughs> at this point, it's just, it's just talking. <laughs> I can just see it now, three Broncos side by side going down to re recreate the Le Mans finish. We almost did do that because, um, Jovina and Erica did wait for me and Betsy, and we did cross the finish line together. Yeah. And we, um, it would have been awesome to have waited and done it with all three. But I think timing wise, if we had waited for the other ones, then we might have been a little bit late on our own finish. Analyzed, that yeah. Very much recreated that, that very yeah. famous Le Mans finish where, uh, where the finishing order was changed by the, the waiting. Tell me, though, yeah. that somebody got the photo op, right? Somebody from Ford got the photo op. At least two of you. Come on, Jovina, yeah. you, you know somebody have PR, Erica? Somebody got the photo on. Yeah, we have the GoPro yes. on, and I'm sure people were taking pictures. I don't know. I was too busy crying like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. It's over. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, why exactly were you crying like a baby? And is it A, in joy, two, in terror, or three? Uh, they're going to ask us to do it again. Like, just like relief and pride and just exhaustion just like it's, it was such an emotional thing it really snuck up on me and caught me by surprise I was much more emotional um, than I thought I was going to be and I think yeah it's just a mix of all those things and just like living on pure adrenaline for 10 straight days and then just this this sigh of like you I finished you know just this, your body has to release somehow and it just <laughs> came all out my eyes I guess <laughs> <laughs> all right very good. I like that. That's good. Okay, nice. I can go to a shower now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I could get my cell phone back. Yeah. What was it like being without your cell phone for 10 days? I know you, I guess you had it at night, right? Mm, no. Oh, no. So you, you didn't have it for 10 days. No, I mean, we, we um, put them in tamper, evidence taped, covered, pelican so every night when you would come in at, at the end of the day they would always check your case to make sure you haven't opened it and so we really did not have any contact to the outside world for the 10 days we were joking internally like, amongst the six of us that are on the team joking that it felt like the hunger games a little bit because you <laughs> cameras around and taking video of us you know and so we knew like friends and family out there could see us on occasion but we had no idea what was going on in the outside world whatsoever. 
So once you got your phones back, what was the one thing that you were surprised happened in the last 10 days or that you wanted to find out about or catch up on? I mean, he nothing said, nothing happened. happened. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's that everything was the exact same as I left it 10 days before. Darn, that's, that's probably what I know. <laughs> ah, it's the same yeah. old thing. Nothing's changed. And it hadn't snowed. California didn't fall off in the ocean. And, you know, basics, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's it. Erica, that was pretty it for you? Yeah, I mean, I was excited to talk to my husband, but then, I, so I made that call. And then right after that, honestly, I turned off my phone and I put it back in the case and I closed it up until the following day. I was like, I don't want to track... <laughs> I don't want to check social media. I don't want to check my email. Like, I want to just enjoy this moment. You know, I talked to my husband. He knows I finished. He knows how I'm feeling and that we're safe. And that was enough for me. The next day, I, like, started going through all my stuff. But, um, yeah. Alana, you didn't start, like, putting out dog videos or anything <laughs> in your uh, Instagram or anything? I, um, I mean, I missed my phone every day. I know that... You know, for a lot of people, they were like, it was really great to be away from it. And it was like a nice break. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I have no shame about my <laughs> love for my, my phone. And uh, I have like notes in my notebook that just say like, I miss my phone. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I was perfectly happy to get it back. And it also felt perfectly normal to me to get it back. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I do so much travel. I mean, less and less now where there isn't cell service. But, you know, when I first started doing like, trips in Baja and stuff. There wouldn't be cell service the whole time I was down there. Or like the first time I ever went to Lamar, I didn't have enough money to like do um, international calling and stuff. So like, it's not that, it wasn't a super weird experience for me to like not have it and then get it back. Um, I mostly missed it because I couldn't take, couldn't take photos of things on the road with it. Um, and so I had my big camera and I did take photos while we were driving, but you know, normally I can take photos of like, oh, look, we're passing this weird old junkyard and there's all these old cars there and I'm going to take photos and stuff. And it was like, that was weird for me because I was like, oh man, I have to just look at that thing and then remember it. Like, <laughs> All right. Speaking of that, is there any place that you passed or saw while you were traveling that you want to go back to on purpose? Yes. So many. Um, Dove Springs, for one. I really enjoyed uh, driving around there and would be happy to go back. And also at one point, when um, we weren't exactly where we needed to be, unfortunately, but it was a lovely place. And it was, um, I think Mojave Desert out by the Burrow Schmidt Tunnel. And it was beautiful. There were these like pink cliffs and these like fun sand washes. It was really fun driving. And also it's just like a really interesting place. There's all these like old mines and stuff. So be down to go back to that. How about Erica and Jovina? Any places you want to go back to? I mean, this is a totally foreign type countryside to you from Michigan. Yeah, I thought that um, part of um, the Death Valley, the part, the first days that we went through it, where it was through the, I can't remember, it was part of that canyon that we went, it was really tight turns. Um, I thought that was beautiful. We had like the kind of canyon around us and that's where we saw the little deer hopping up, up the canyon. Um, okay. That was just gorgeous. Um, did, did you name the deer? <laughs> No, but I did take out the GoPro in the middle of me trying to make sure I knew where we were going, which is probably not lost. Um, <laughs> I took out the GoPro to take pictures of the of the deer going up. <laughs> okay. So when are we going to be able to see these videos that you guys did? Where, yeah, where are we when are we going to gonna see the video? That, where, yeah, where, would so, you, where would you see it? We them? just turned over our all of our GoPro <laughs> footage to the agency, so they're sifting through it and logging it and probably laughing their faces off <laughs> watching it. Um, it's going to come out as something together. It's going to okay. come out as some sort of presentation. Is that the idea? Um, I mean, I think we're still trying to develop the communications plan. I think social media will probably play a role. Um, we'll, we'll wait and see what it looks like and then see figure out who and who wants to see it. Yeah, and edit out some of the comments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, they're they're going to be completely clean, Bob. What we are you might talking? have to yeah. do some bleeping. Bleeping, uh, yeah. Well, that'll make it more interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we'll show the human side here. <laughs> yeah, show the real you. See what it's like out there for everybody else. That's what I like. Well, guys, that was great. I, I appreciate you guys coming on and giving us a little uh, – 
for, um, you know, look back at what your experience was with the Rebel Rally, and uh, it was fun hearing your stories. So uh, what are you guys got going? You, you, Jovina and Eric, are just going to be going back to work at Ford and doing what you normally do, correct? You don't have anything coming up? Not going to send you uh, ice no, trucker. No more rallies. No, no more, more rallies. rallies coming up. So we're definitely, you know, have um, have cam campaigns in the works for um, Bronco and Bronco Sport. Um, so yeah, I came home and dove right into that. So. Um, well, I mean, I I have this writing assignment, the the Rebel, which is due soon, um, and some car reviews, and then um, you guys know that I did the book with Don Prudhomme, and so that's out and available now. Good, yeah. and hopefully we'll get you and Don on the show. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just, you know, keeping the fingers, toes crossed and all that stuff. Yeah. So, hey, remember, don't forget to listen, like and subscribe to our audio podcast right here that you're listening to on radio.com and knx1070.com. That's radio, the radio.com app, along with I heard you can do this on Alexa. You could actually tell Alexa to, to play talking about cars and you could actually, you know. Yeah, most times when I talk to women, they don't do anything I say. Well, because they're not named Alexa. That's the well, problem. That could be the problem. Yeah, yeah, that could be it. Don't forget to watch our video podcast on our Two Tired Guys Productions channel. And uh, that, of course, uh, where else? On YouTube. Follow us on social media. If you want to support us, get your name on our post show credits. So many of you have done it so far. Uh, become a Two Tired Guys patron on patreon.com. Until next time, uh, Bob, do you want to, before I go to until next time, do you have anything you want to wrap it up with? You know what? Keep it on the road. Okay, Bob. Off road. Rubber side down and shiny side up. Or off road. Go see or Cal. Off go see keep Cal. It on the off road, yeah. Cal. All right. Yep. Excellent. Until next time, I'm Randy. That's I'm Bob. Bob. Me. Yeah. What? Okay, huh? that's Alana. That's, that's Alana. Jovina. That's Erica. We've all been talking about cars. We'll see you next time. <laughs>